Okay, hey guys, today we're looking at 5.2, which is solving systems of linear equations by substitution, okay? Our target question is, of course, well, how do you solve a system of linear equations with substitution? Before we get into it, I kind of want to recap with what we did yesterday, 5.1, um, which was our introduction to solving systems of linear equations, okay? If you remember, a system of linear equations is just two or more linear equations, okay? So one could be y equals negative 3x plus 5. The other one could be, I don't know, uh, y equals 4x plus 3, okay? And the solution to this system is some value, x1 and y1, which makes both of these true at the exact same time, okay? And Yesterday, we went over how we could find these graphically, okay? I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's just say that's my blue equation right here, my second one. And this one has a negative, so I know the slope is going to be a negative right here. Okay, again, this is just a rough guess, okay? And we found out that exactly where these two lines intersect here, okay, that point is our solution to this system of linear equations right there all right so that's what we did yesterday okay remember we had four main ways to solve this number one was graphically done we did it okay numerically just using a table well based off of last chapter if we plug this into our y equals and use our calculator okay we could set up a table of values and just look okay we could just use our eyes to see when these two values have the same inputs and outputs okay so We'll talk about that more, but we're done with that for now. Okay, and then what we're going on to do today is our algebraic method. Okay, we're doing it algebraically. So this is for today. All right, and then matrices might come towards algebra two uh, or pre-calculus. Okay, so we'll save that for later, but here we go, algebraically. It's, it's pretty formulaic, okay? We have four main steps to solving systems using substitution, okay? First step is to solve one equation for one variable. Now, I'm going to put solve in parentheses, and I think you're going to see why very soon. Once you have one variable on one side by itself, okay, then you substitute that expression into the other equation. Okay? Now, before we even get any further, I'm going to look, I just want to point this out. This is solved it's solved for x, right? x is on one side of the equal sign by itself. Everything else is on the other. So now that it's solved for x, we can substitute this x in for the x's in the other equation, okay? So let's go there. So we've solved for one. It's, they're being very nice to us. It's already done for us, okay? And then we substitute this in for here. Well, if x equals 6y minus 7, then anywhere I see an x over here, I can put in 6y minus 7. So it's 4 times, and now 6y minus 7 plus y, and that equals negative 3. So again, all I did was I plugged this in for x. All right, well, now that we've substituted in the expression from step one into the other equation, we solve, we legitimately solve the new equation for the variable, okay? Well, I'm looking at this, our variable is y, so follow your algebraic steps. Distribution, okay, four times six y is 24y, four times what would be negative seven is negative 28 plus y, equals negative 3. All right, get all of the y's on one side by itself, get all of the other numbers and everything else on the other. Combining like terms, combine like terms, gets 24y plus y, so that's 25y. To get rid of this 28, I'm going to add 28 to both sides, and we get that 25y equals 25. Well, we don't care about 25y, I just want 1y. So in order to take care of that, 
we do the inverse operation. This 25 is attached by multiplication. The inverse operation, or to undo it, is to divide by 25. So now we get that y equals 25 divided by 25, or y equals 1. Now that we have y equals 1, we've solved for that. We're going to plug that variable into an equation to find the other variable. Notice it just says an equation. You could plug it into this one, or you could plug it into this one. It does not matter. You can plug it into either one. So I look at this second one. I think that one might be a bit easier. So if we have 4x plus y equals negative 3 and y equals 1, then that turns into 4x plus 1 equals negative 3. And solve for x. Okay, minus 1, minus 1, 4x equals negative 4, divide both sides by 4, and you get that x equals negative 1. And that's your solution right here. I'm going to write them as an ordered pair. x is negative 1, y is positive 1. There it is. Okay? Now, let's run through these steps again now that we've actually completed a problem. So again, we solved one equation for one variable. This was already solved for us, so we didn't really need to do anything. But remember, to solve means just to get all of the, you know, just a single x or a single y on one side of the equal sign by itself. Okay, so we got the x on the left-hand side. That's perfect. Now, again, I said solve because when we solved we for x, we still had y's in here. Okay, now... So that's why I put it in quotes, because when I say solve, and I, you know, this is what I mean. I mean solve to get y equals some number. Okay, but this is up here, this is solve in quotes, because we still have x equals six times this other variable y. Okay. If you have a question about that, put it in the margin, bring it in the class tomorrow. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay. But then we substituted that into our other e equation and we simplified it, combined like terms, did all of our algebra, and we legitimately solved for y. Well, once we solved for y, we plugged that into either one of these equations, it's your choice, okay, and we solved for x. And that's it, that's your solution. Okay. Now we could totally check this. We could check that if I plug in negative one for x and one for y, okay, that it's gonna work out. So I didn't leave myself much room. Um, can we do it right here? Things are getting a bit messy. Check. For the first one, we get that negative 1 equals 6 times y, which is 1, minus 7. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. And yes, negative 1 does equal negative 1. If you wanted to check for the second one, okay, make sure it still works. You get that 4 times x, which is negative 1, plus y, which is 1, equals negative 3. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And yes, negative 3 equals negative 3. Perfect. All right, letter B. Now notice what's different between, different between A and B. A, they had x equals something all laid out for us. Okay, not the case in letter B, but that's okay. The process is to look inside and say, hey, do I have any X's or Y's that are isolated already, that are by themselves? And I look at this and I say, ding, 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 right there. Okay, so I know that I'm going to try to isolate Y first. And I do that by adding 2X. So now it becomes Y equals 2x minus 1. That was our first step. Solve, in quotes, okay, one equation for one variable. All right, one variable, and it's all good. And then we take that, we take it, and we bring it into our second equation. So now anywhere I see a y, I substitute in a 2x minus 1. So this becomes 4x plus 2 times 
2x minus 1 equals 12. And again, we do that because here we're solving with two variables, and now we turn it into something, an equation that we can solve using one variable right there. Okay, now run through your algebra. Distribute, combine like terms, okay, isolate the variable. So we have 4x plus 4x, oops, 4x minus 2 equals 12. Isolate the variable. Plus 2, plus 2, 8x equals 14. Okay. Well, we don't care about 8x, so we undo it by dividing. And we get that x equals 14 eighths. Okay. Or to simplify, simplify it, it equals 7 fourths. And there it is. Don't be afraid of fractions, okay? If you get a fraction in any one of these, don't worry. It's okay, all right? Now that we've solved for x, we can take 7 fourths and we can plug it back in for and solve for y, okay? Again, the easiest way that I see to do this is to plug it back into my original, okay? Again, you could plug it into this one. That's fine. Or you could just plug it straight back into your original. So y equals... 2 times, and we just solved for x, 7 fourths minus 1. Remember, these are saying the same thing. They have the same value. It's just been moved around a little bit. So the fact that I plugged in 7 fourths into this as opposed to our original, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we just solve for y normally. 14 over 4 minus 1, y equals 14, oh, okay, a fraction minus a whole number. Well, that's no problem. We just turned this whole number into a fraction with a common denominator, right? 4 over 4 equals 1, because now it just turns into y equals 14 minus 4 divided by 4, or 10 divided by 4, or to simplify, 5 divided by 2. And there's your answer. Okay? So x is 7 fourths, y is 5 halves. Okay? I'll leave the check up to you. If you want to check my solution, if you don't believe me, plug these numbers back in for both of these and check for yourself. All right. I'm going to give you, let's see, we got one. I'm going to go through two more examples, okay, and then I'm going to leave two for you. So this is the next example. Again, I encourage you, pause the video, okay, pause it right now, try to work this out by yourself, and then play the video so that you can actually run through and see if you're doing it correctly, okay? So here we go. Our first step is to solve, quote unquote, solve for one of these variables, okay? Well, as I look at this, I could... I'm going to solve for x first. And do you know why? Because watch this. If I minus y and I minus y, I have x equals 6 minus y. Okay, our x is positive, and that, that makes us happy. All right, that's, that's going to be a big topic moving forward uh, that I'll cover later. But anything that we can do to keep this variable positive, okay, it's just going to make it easier on us as we move down the line. Well, we solved for x. So now plug this x, okay, whatever it equals, in for your x's over here. So now we have 2x, or instead of 2x, we have 2 times 6 minus y. Minus y equals 9. Now that our equation is in terms of one variable y, we can solve. 12 minus 2y minus y equals 9. Combine like terms, get all the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to minus 12, minus 12. So we get negative 3y equals negative 3. Divide by negative 3, and we get that y equals positive 1. 
Now that we have y equals positive 1, plug this back into either one of your equations. I'm going to do the first one because it looks a bit easier. Okay, And we get that x plus 1 equals 6. Solve for x. Minus 1, minus 1. We get that x equals positive 5. So your solution is 5 comma 1. Again, graphically, if we were to graph these two lines, right, put them into slope-intercept form and, and graph them, okay, 5, 1, stomach right there. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. We would have one line that comes in like this, and our second line might come in like this, and they would hit each other at this point, 5, 1. Pointer of intersection. Okay? So, remember, if you have any questions on this, write it in the margin. Next page. I am going to leave num uh, sorry, letter B all for you. Give it a shot, okay? Try your best. Also, try your best for letter D. Okay, letter D is all for you. Letter B is all for you. Our last example that we're going to do together is letter C. Okay? So, starting off, what's our first step? Solve for one variable, quote unquote, solve. Okay, well with this, I think that I'm going to, hmm, I see 2x and if I got a minus y, if I subtract 2x from both sides, I'm still gonna get that minus y. And it's the same thing over here. Hmm, 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 which one do I wanna do? Okay, well sometimes it will get a bit messy, okay, and we will have to deal with some negative numbers. So that being said, watch what happens when I subtract 2x from both sides. We're left with negative y equals negative 2x minus 5. Okay, but we didn't really solve for y, did we? No, because we have negative y. So in order to combat that, we just divide by negative 1, both sides. So now we have y equals, this 2x becomes positive, and this minus 5 also becomes positive. And there we go. Okay, so we've solved for y. But now it's still in terms of x. So take that, okay, and plug it in for your y's up here. So now we have 3x minus 2x plus 5. And that still equals 1 our new equation is in terms of just one variable x so now we can run our algebra that minus sign gets distributed to everything inside these parentheses so it's 3x minus 2x minus 5 equals 1 combine like terms we get x add 5 to both sides equals 6 well if x equals 6 I think that I'm going to plug this into my original equation right here. Again, this is secretly the same as this. All right? Or maybe not so secret because we did the algebra and we proved that this is the same as this. So I'm going to plug in 6 into my original. So then we get that y equals 2 times 6 plus 5. Or y equals, that's 12, plus 5 is 17. So our solution is 6 comma 17. And again, if we were to write these both in slope intercept form and graph them, okay, we might have something that looks like this. Just eyeballing it. And this would be at the point 6, 17, where they intersect. Okay? Again, if you have any questions, write them down. Letter B and letter D are for you. My note here is having solutions that, is, that are fractions is okay. That's totally fine. All right. And then we will do applications in class together, so don't worry about that. All right, to summarize, all right, follow these four steps. Solve for one equation, for one variable. Substitute it, okay, back into the expression from step one into the other equation. 
we want to actually solve the new equation for the variable and then lastly plug that variable back into either one of your originals to find the other variable okay again if you have any questions write them down bring them in other than that have a great day